Hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I want to look at the contribution that Lord Clement Jones made in the debate regarding Baroness Nicholson and Lord Blencather's amendments 297F and 297G. This is part of the Keep Ward's single sex campaign. So let's take a look at his speech. My Lord, I want to uh, support the noble Lord Hunt in uh, his uh, very reasonable request, it seems to me, uh, to get the Minister to confirm that a review uh, will take place. My Lords, I remember uh, some 20 years ago I was challenging the noble Lord Hunt when he was uh, Health Minister. Uh, the pledge for single-sex wards had been made by his predecessor, I think it was Lady J, um, and uh, it was a very slow road towards single-sex wards, uh, my Lords. And then uh, reading um, uh, Annex B, it seems that suddenly we're in a completely different place, my Lords. Uh, 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 the goalposts have been moved, and I, I don't quite understand who was consulted uh, about Annex B uh, and uh, where we go from here in the face of uh, uh, completely uh, different wording in the main guidance um, to the actual Annex itself. Uh, uh, how can one reconcile uh, uh, this, if you like, gender-friendly Annex B with a single-sex uh, ward pledge in the main guidance, my lords. At the very least, there needs to be a review about what exactly uh, is the regime that we want to support. Um, and I entirely agree with those speakers who say, I, I don't believe that anybody who raises this issue uh, should be labelled in one way uh, or another, my lords. Um, I, I was particularly concerned, however, I must say, to see that effectively uh, if you classify yourself as non-binary, you can take your choice as to whether you go in a, in a ward of any particular sex. Now, my lords, I don't know that I see that in any equalities legislation or human rights legislation uh, in particular, and that seems to me to be the hardest point, and I can't understand quite why uh, that has appeared. So, my lords, um, uh, uh, I don't think any purpose is served by lurid examples of this, that and the other. Uh, as, as a lawyer, I know that hard cases make bad law, my lords. But at the very least, I believe the conflict between the main guidance and Annex B does really need to be resolved uh, in one way or another, my lords, absolutely clearly, probably with parliamentary approval. It's got to be conforming to equalities legislation, my lords, and I very much hope the Minister will pledge to take that forward. Mm -hmm. So that was Lord Clement Jones there talking in the debate on the in the House of Lords. Now, um, Lord Clement Jones is a Liberal Democrat. Uh, the Liberal Democrats, as a rule, are very supportive of the LGBT WTF lobby. Lord Clement Jones, however, highlighted in his speech that there was a huge fight, a political fight, fight to ensure that we had single sex wards. It went on for 20 plus years until we got those rights enshrined. And now we have this infamous Annex B guidance, see my video, um, which is complete contradiction to um, the Equality Act and to all of those 20 years of policy developments. So um, he's quite right. And, and, and this is the normal reaction when someone finds out about this stuff, they're like, but that doesn't how does that how does that even work? You are correct. It doesn't work. And that's why we need to look at it again and find a, a different way, better way, a fairer way of accommodating everybody's needs and everybody's rights uh, without compromising women's privacy, safety and dignity. Um, he also points out that it is absolutely ridiculous that Annex B says that if you have a non-binary identity, you get to choose which ward you go on. Bonkers. I mean, you take the banker, Philip Bunce, who comes into work two days a week dressed in um, transvestic uh, drag uh, and calls himself Pippa. So he, he is male for some days of the week and female for other days of the week. That's what we're meant to believe. So he gets to choose which ward he goes on. And then what, like when he changes his mind, like when he changes as he does of a Tuesday, 
does he does he have to be moved to another ward? Does he need two beds in a hospital so that we can guarantee him gender affirming care at all times? You know, the ridiculous contradictions in this system, if we actually adopt this wholesale, are easy to point out to people who are reasonable. And so, you know, even Liberal Democrats are quite prepared to admit that this is an unworkable policy. Let's start from there and let's see if we can make something better. Uh, I'm, I'm really pleased that Lord Clement Jones uh, added his uh, voice to the calls for the government to review the conflict between the Equality Act and this uh, Annex B guidance. Thank you for that. So what else do we know about Lord Clement Jones? Well, he made a very, very moving speech in the debate about assisted dying. Now, in a comment on a previous video that I made uh, about Lord Barclay in the prisons um, debate, where I brought up his, his comments about the assisted dying and, and somebody said, what's the connection? There is no direct connection. I'm a feminist. I'm a woman and I'm disabled. So all three of those things influence which which things leap out at me when I'm looking at, you know, um, how somebody's voted and the kind of things that they've said in speeches at the House of Lords. So obviously debates about assisted dying is something that I look at because I can infer from that what your position is in terms of disabled people's rights, because disabled people by and large are in agreement that we do not want assisted dying. The people that advocate for assisted dying tend to be people that are not yet disabled, who are very worried and scared about what would happen if they became disabled. And, you know, I hear that it is a very uh, difficult thing to adjust to. And I think it's quite normal to need a period of adjustment and go through a grief process. And disabled people have higher incidence of depression than than other people because it's it's a hard life. Um but that's not to say that it's not a life worth living. So um, that's why I focus on uh, debates about assisted dying in the same way that I would always look at debates about LGBT issues or debates about abortion rights or anything else that I think is um, kind of like my sphere of interest. So Lord Clement Jones made a really moving intervention in this debate about assisted dying. And um, he recognised he, he, his wife was um, terminally ill and sadly passed away. She died of cancer and it took her five years of terminal illness and it was painful. And I'm sure it was incredibly distressing for her and distressing for him to be her carer during that time. He recognises, however, that he wouldn't have given up any of those days with his wife and neither would she. She didn't want the opportunity to lose her life any earlier than she was going to lose it because of nature and this natural process of dying that we all face one day. So Lord Clement Jones um, highlighted that what we need is really good palliative care rather than solutions for bringing about somebody's uh, euthanasia, death, um, before their time comes. Um, and he highlights how in countries where they have voluntary euthanasia, there's, there's always mission creep because um, old, sick and disabled people become regarded as burdens on the state. Um, some people's care is very, very expensive. Um, and the burdens on their family and largely that burden falls on women in the family. Let's not forget that most care work is done by women in the family. So having a disabled family member that goes on for 20 years is a huge, huge task that women are not recognised for, um, for, for the commitment that they make to caring for their um, disabled and old and sick family members. Men also are carers as Lord Clement Jones was, but I'm making a general statement because by and large, caring work is, is undertaken by women. So um, I believe that the solution is that we value all people. Uh, we're all different. We all have different gifts. We all have different challenges. So I think we should all be valued for what we bring to the table rather than some of us be selected out. 
So do please consider writing to Lord Clement Jones. I'm going to write to him. I'm going to write to him and thank him for his intervention. I'm going to ask him if he, um, if he finds that his colleagues in the Liberal Democrat group in the House of Lords uh, share some of his concerns, because I'd be interested to know whether he'll write back. I don't know. Um, I have had several letters back from the House of Lords. I haven't shared them all uh, with you, but I am going to make a video very soon showing like loads of correspondence. So that's going to be um, a good. Th so Lord Clement Jones would be great if he would write back in time for me to make that video. <laughs> if you want to write to your Lords, there is a video that I've already made, uh, Write to Your MPs and Lords, which explains the process in detail. Uh, please uh, like, subscribe, share the love, um, it's been great hanging out with you again. If you want to support me practically, my PayPal link is in the description box along with links to everything that I've talked about today. Great to see you, take care, I'll see you soon.